As anticipated, the 4K disc of the Ten Commandments is one of the best examples of the format yet seen. Its VistaVision origins complete with a die transfer process by Technicolor means that it looks better than just about every modern release. VistaVision has its origins in the summer of 1952, when the motion picture industry was facing increased competition from that new format known as television. 3D had already been tried to entice audiences back, but then Cinerama appeared and immediately every major studio knew they needed their own huge widescreen process, complete with multi-channel sound. This is the age from which our present screen ratio standards originate, and also to a certain extent our multi-channel sound systems, because despite reservations from much of the industry, this is when the multi-channel stereo systems first got going. Paramount adopted the VistaVision format, motion picture high fidelity, in response to 20th Century Fox's CinemaScope. Paramount had concluded that a larger format negative would provide significantly superior standard 35mm prints. This is a standard 35mm print, but what VistaVision did was it turned the film on its side and travelled through the camera horizontally, and with that they doubled the size of the 35mm frame to eight perforations. Now, it was rare to be able to see a film screened in genuine VistaVision because this required a projector that twisted the film as it went through the gate. And indeed, in the UK, there was just the Odeon Leicester Square and the Plaza on Lower Regent Street, just down from Piccadilly, that had the ability to screen genuine VistaVision. We've been through this partially before in the review of Spartacus, which used a process that was called then Super Technorama 70. Well, Technorama was actually VistaVision with a 1.5 squeeze on it, which meant that they could do 70mm prints at 2.2 to 1 at the end of the process, and also by cropping a bit top and bottom 2.35 to 1, 2.39 to 1, something like that. In order to ensure that just about every cinema could be catered for, Paramount incorporated guidelines for the cameramen so they could check that they weren't cropping heads and too much of the picture, which would mean they could supply release prints in the original VistaVision format of around 166 to 1. It could also be cropped to 185 to 1 without losing any important information, but also 2 to 1. Now, it was interesting in 1989 that there was a 70mm release of the Ten Commandments, which of course is 2.2 to 1, which meant it exceeded the limits of VistaVision. But even worse than that, there have been releases of 2.39 to 1 in anamorphic form. So the Ten Commandments has really suffered over the years, and possibly lost some of its reputation as a result of this butchery. But thankfully now with this 4K disc, it is restored back to 1.78 to 1. That VistaVision frame did work. The superior prints that resulted on 35mm were evidently superior and are still considered so to this day. And of course that means that superior imagery with which it was shot has transposed down to these 4K discs. Ironically, The Ten Commandments was one of the first of the big Hollywood films to get a full-length home movie release when Marketing Film International issued it complete on Super 8. This was around 1980, and sadly most of the prints have suffered fade in the intervening period, but they were very good at the time. Marketing also made it available as a 3 x 400 foot cutdown, about 48 minutes, and a 400 foot cutdown, around 16 minutes. But this film was designed to be seen on huge screens, and watching it on our tiny home screens, particularly with this new 4K disc, it does mean that you can pick out every single defect the optical blue screen effects stand out a mile and do spoil the overall impact of what is undoubtedly a great film. This would not have been so obvious back in 1956, with the image being projected perhaps 50 feet wide, and of course few in the audience would have known anything about blue screen and how the effects were achieved. I expect they'd have just been astounded by the whole magnitude of the production, and wouldn't have even noticed that some of the shots were clearly faked. Despite the somewhat dodgy blue screen effects, which sees a marked degradation in image, the overall quality of this 4K disc is exceptional. 
It does not have quite the best definition I've seen so far, but it does have the best colour I've seen. I haven't seen them all however, so it's possible there's a better Technicolor release out there, the Wizard of Oz perhaps, but whatever, the Technicolor process is unsurpassed to this day, and what a shame we haven't got anything to replace it. IMDB strangely mentioned a 4K restoration in 2021, whereas back in 2010 this film underwent a 6K restoration and then in 2012 was released on Blu-ray. And the Blu-ray is of exceptional quality by the way, it's just not as good as the 4K where the colour and it seems the definition actually are a little better. But anyway, I believe this was from the 6K Master, it certainly got that superior look about it. Technicolor produced three matrices from the negative for the primary colours and I believe it was those matrices that were used for this restoration but I don't know for sure. It just has that look about it. There are sometimes a character in the middle of the screen may not be quite as well defined as those around him and that doesn't really make any sense unless it was a slight misalignment between the three matrices and indeed that is a known problem with that process. But they've done an exceptional job and for the most part it matches up perfectly. I checked other 4K discs I thought would compare favourably with the Ten Commandments and the ideal one to go to first was Spartacus which was a Technirama film so 2.2 to 1 aspect ratio against 178 to 1 of Ten Commandments. I think Spartacus has slightly better definition than Ten Commandments but the colour is better on Ten Commandments. Sound on Ten Commandments is DTS HD. It does have better image quality than almost everything else I've seen, apart from Spartacus perhaps, Tenet and a few others, but Murder on the Orient Express is still in a league of its own on my system. So if you want to see one of the best 4K releases so far, I recommend purchasing a copy of the Ten Commandments. With a running time of almost four hours, it can be watched over two evenings, because the intermission title is still in place, whereupon you can stop and recommence later on. One criticism as far as I'm concerned of this film is that Cecil B. DeMille's narration towards the end of the film got a bit excessive. You may find it's okay and doesn't bother you at all, but it just spoiled the enjoyment a little for me. So The Ten Commandments, it's an historic film, it's a great film, it looks fantastic, and I don't think you'll be disappointed giving it a screen on your 4K system. Right, I've been getting requests for films to review and it seems there's a healthy appetite for the superhero films. There's a remaster of Batman vs Superman coming shortly apparently, so I thought perhaps I'd take a look at the 1989 Tim Burton Batman next, we'll see, and also perhaps the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. I don't need much of an excuse to watch anything with Spider-Man in it, so we'll see what happens there. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to create more content like this in the future. Until the next time, bye bye for now.